Hey, it's Thomas DeLauer, and today I want to dive a little bit deeper into testosterone and the actual legitimate scientific correlation between testosterone and fat accumulation. But before I do that, let me give you a broad overview of testosterone and how it affects us. Okay, as we get older, testosterone levels start to decrease. Now, additionally, we have an increase in what's called the SHBG, the sex hormone binding globulin. I've talked about it in other videos. Basically what happens is that sex hormone binding globulin holds on to a lot of our testosterone that is available and locks it up. So that means we're left with very, very minimal amounts of testosterone that we can actually utilize as we grow older. So why does this correlate with fat accumulation? So let's go ahead and dive into that. The first one that we have to look at is the correlation between testosterone levels and energy. It's kind of an obvious one. Okay, when your energy levels are low, you're not as active, which means you're probably not gonna burn as much fat. But there's more to it than just what's on the surface. You see, it comes down to that mitochondrial function. You hear me talk about it in a lot of my videos. I'm always talking about how the mitochondria is that energy powerhouse. It's so critical for us to take care of it. I think a lot of us neglect the mitochondria in general. You see, what happens is that low testosterone function ends up making it so that we're not able to metabolize our proteins, our fats, and our carbs as efficiently. It slows down that entire process, which can essentially end up leading to some fat accumulation. Some of the studies that I've looked at found that lower levels of testosterone dramatically affected the amount of lipid oxidation. What that means is it's dramatically decreasing the mitochondria's function to be able to use fat as a source of fuel. It means that now the mitochondria has to focus more so on utilizing glucose for fuel, which may not be the healthiest route, especially as we get older. And for what it's worth, this isn't bro science. There is a lot of science out there that backs this up. In fact, it's shown that 40% of obese men have low levels of testosterone and over 50% of obese diabetic men have extremely low levels of testosterone. Now that diabetic link is extremely interesting as we start looking at insulin resistance. And I'm going to get to that in just a second. Before I talk about the insulin resistance in general, let's talk about how the body normally utilizes glucose. You see, when we are functioning normally, our bodies are going to utilize glucose for energy. When we start depriving ourselves of glucose or when we start exercising intensely, those glucose levels drop and our bodies start utilizing fat for fuel a little bit more. Well, if lipid oxidation is not functioning properly within the body due to low testosterone, your body's gonna always be looking for glucose to use, and it's just gonna let those lipids circulate and ultimately store. One of the major reasons why we have heavy fat accumulation when we have low levels of testosterone. Okay, but now since we have so much levels of glucose flowing around as well, we have to look at insulin resistance. You see, when your body is not able to utilize sugars right, not able to utilize carbohydrates, it's generally because you have what's called insulin resistance. When you consume a carbohydrate, your body secretes insulin. That insulin allows the carbohydrate to go into the proper storage. It goes into the muscle in the form of glycogen. But if you're having an issue with insulin resistance, for example, a type two diabetic would be insulin resistant, it's going to make it so that those carbohydrates are just floating around through the bloodstream. Well, this can ultimately cause them to get stored as fat, which leads us into an entirely different section. So now we have to talk about hormones. And how does the link between fat and hormones work? Well, it's simple. When our testosterone levels are lower and our bodies are running predominantly on glucose, they're not utilizing the fat. So of course, we're storing the fat. But that fat actually causes an enzymatic response that causes that testosterone to convert into estrogen. You see what happens is fat contains something called aromatase. So if you have relatively low levels of testosterone, your fat stores are gonna convert that testosterone via aromatase into something called estradiol, which is also known as estrogen. Estrogen gives you the non-male characteristics. They can cause that gynecosmastia, they can cause that fatigue, they can cause the moodiness. That's where a lot of these effects take place with low testosterone. And you can see how this can steamroll. So low testosterone levels means more body fat. More body fat means more conversion of testosterone into estrogen. That means lower levels of testosterone, which means more fat accumulation. You can see it just continues on down the line. Now, to add insult to injury, we look at insulin resistance and we look at the overall link between fat accumulation and fat gain and insulin resistance. The more fat that you have, the more insulin resistant you are. So therefore, it's even easier to store that fat. One more thing we have to look at is the C-reactive protein levels. So when we have high levels of fat, our C-reactive protein and inflammatory markers are elevated, which links to even lower testosterone levels. So again, we look at this and we say, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Did obese people develop low testosterone or did low testosterone link to fat accumulation? 
Well, it could go either way. But one thing is for certain, if we can take care of our bodies and make sure that we are utilizing fats for fuel properly and making sure that we're taking control of our insulin response, we can mitigate some of these issues that can occur. So what I propose to you, and now again, I'm not a doctor, so I can't write you a specific diet plan that says this is what you need to do, but I can definitely hypothesize that if we start controlling our carbohydrates and we can condition our body to run on fats for fuel a little bit more, possibly even a ketogenic style diet, then we can potentially force the body to start utilizing fats and not have that excess glucose that's causing that insulin resistance. Because at the end of the day, if you're on a ketogenic diet, that insulin resistance isn't going to be as big of a deal. And the reason that I suggest this is because I talk to a lot of guys. I talk to a lot of stressed out guys that are middle-aged, that are working hard, and they're really frustrated because their sex drives are down, their libido's not good, their motivation's down, but they don't want to necessarily go on testosterone replacement therapy. And I don't blame them. That's a big commitment. So the first step is to take control nutritionally understanding how testosterone links with fat accumulation and understanding that cycle, that vicious circle that occurs so that you can break the cycle and at least stop your testosterone levels from declining anymore. As always, keep it locked in here on my videos. If you have any comments or any suggestions on videos, be sure to put them in the comment section below and I'll get my research team on it. We'll produce an awesome video. See you in the next video.